Hey guys, Clint here, Horn and Fiber. I'm back in the shop today. I'm gonna to turn a bass plug for this little southern horn. Let's get busy. So today I'm not doing a bench copy of any particular horn, but I am taking some inspiration from Dr. Hopkins' book on this Shenandoah Valley horn. Um, the base plug on this horn is about a one inch tall walnut plug with an iron staple. That's what we're looking to replicate. What I typically do is go ahead and index, make a mark on my walnut to index um, it in the chuck. So if I have to remove it for any reason, I can get it back in there in the same position. So the first thing we'll do is fit our base plug to the horn. We're going to turn about a quarter to three eighths inch taper on the end of this plug. You can kind of eyeball this taper, uh, but sometimes I like to use a little charcoal just rubbed inside the horn. And then use that to check the taper on my base plug. And usually if I'm hitting somewhere, it'll leave a black mark. Like here, I can clearly see that where I'm hitting is down toward the, the edge of the taper and not back towards the base of the horn. If I were to take material off all the way back, at this point, when I finished, my base plug would probably be too loose. So where I need to take it off of is down here at the edge. Hope that helps. So I'm pretty happy with the fit of the horn to the base plug. The next thing we want to do is hollow out a cavity into the base plug that will do two things. It will increase the carrying capacity of the horn and it'll also lighten the base of the horn so that it's not butt heavy. There we go. We can see we've got a, a nice cavity hollowed out there. I didn't go too deep with it. Uh, this base plug is only supposed to be about an inch tall when we're done with it. So I uh, want to leave enough um, material in there to, to make sure that my staple has good support. Uh, but at this point, we're ready to turn this piece around in the chuck uh, and start doing our final shaping. Again, when I change position uh, of the base in the chuck, I go ahead and remark it uh, on an area where I'm not going to be cutting just to give me a, an index. If I ever need to take it out of the chuck to check something, I can get it back in just like I took it out. The original base was only an inch high, but since we're not doing a bench copy and I've got all this extra material, I'm going to opt for an inch and a quarter. couple of details about this um, original base that are worth noting. One is this cute little bead right around the, the waist that I want to replicate and include in mine. 
The other thing is there's two inside lines turned onto this base uh, and what looks to be a red painted band uh, between the two inside lines, which I think is kind of a, a, a neat aspect too. So we'll, we'll probably include that on this one. At this point, I go ahead and pull the base plug off the lathe. That was one of the reasons for making those indexing marks on it, so that if I need to put it back on in the same position uh, and continue turning, I can. Uh, but I go ahead and fit it up to the horn, um, you know, looking for really proportions. Uh, is it proportional to the rest of the horn? Is it too big? Does it overpower the horn? Um, I think this is going to come out about right for what I'm wanting. Um, so at this point, we're going to go ahead and put it back on the lathe, do a little sanding, uh, soften some of these edges a little bit, um, and maybe put some stain on it. Being that this is walnut, I'm going to go ahead and raise the grain a little bit using some alcohol. Uh, this dries a whole lot faster than water. Uh, kind of does the exact same thing. Just raises that grain, gets it to stand up so that we can sand it off and wind up with a little smoother finish. So on the original base plug, there was a painted red band. Uh, I kind of like that feature, so I'm gonna include that on, on this one as well. Uh, I'm just using you know, a standard craft store, water-based uh, acrylic uh, to paint that on with, and then I'll put stain over the top of that, and that will allow it to, to blend and, and look properly aged with the horn by the time we're done. So the paint on our base plug has had time to dry. We're gonna go ahead and add a little stain. Uh, start blending all this in. This is just uh, Minwax Dark Walnut. All right, well, there it is. That's my rendition of one example of a Shenandoah Valley base plug. Uh, like the little bead, the painted band, 
Of course, we're hollowed out inside to increase volume and lighten the horn up a little bit. Um, hope you found something in this video that's useful to you. If so, please hit that like and subscribe button. We sure appreciate your support. Also, check us out on Instagram at Horn and Fiber. That's where we're posting all of our latest material. We'll catch you there. Thanks again. As always, keep the fire burning.